Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today we're going to talk about a health problem that many people have but most don't want to talk about because they feel it's embarrassing and that is urinary incontinence. Well there's an RPV woman that's talking about it. She owns Praxis Physical Therapy right here in San Pedro and she's helped thousands of people suffering from incontinence by using physical therapy. And she's recently co-authored a book that's providing much relief to those with this problem. It's a silent epidemic. Um, 34 million Americans suffer in silence with urinary incontinence and that amounts to about half of all women and 10% of all men. I was only good for about two hours and uh, within two hours that pad was completely soaked. It wasn't absorbing anymore. Huh? It was just running down my leg by then. I got it about 10 or 11 years ago. It just got so bad I was wearing pads constantly 24-7 because it just dripped day and night. My daughter will be 10 in May, and right after I had her, I had a sudden issue with incontinence. Urinary incontinence is the accidental leakage of urine, no matter how small. It might happen with coughing, sneezing, running, jumping, even something as simple as standing up from a chair. Or it might happen on the way to the bathroom, where someone gets an urge to urinate that's so strong, comes on so suddenly that they don't make it. Um, it's not just something people have in nursing homes. Active, otherwise healthy people leak urine in epidemic proportion. It's people like Tom, a businessman, Eula, a retired nurse, Kim, a young mother. They are three of the thousands of patients who sought help from physical therapist Catherine Kasai. Their stories are different, but they wanted the same thing, to put an end to their urinary incontinence. For Tom, his problems began after prostate surgery. He leaked so much, he stopped going on trips with friends. Well, about 20 years ago, I had uh, prostate surgery, and everything was fine for the about 20 years. And then uh, I started developing uh, scar tissue on my bladder neck, and they went and removed it one time. It came back again in about four months. They four or five months went in again, removed it. Came back again in four or five months, went in again and removed it, and each time. I was a little more incontinent, let's say. Yeah, means I was leaking all the time, huh? And I was putting on uh, pads, male pads, uh, to absorb the, uh, the urine. And I'd go through a, a half a dozen a day, and at nighttime it would subside, and then the next morning it would start again. When you first came in? 89-year-old Euler had suffered for more than a decade. She had two surgeries, was on medications, but still wetting and waking up four to five times a night. And at her age, she had little hope. I couldn't make it to the bathroom in time, going from three, four, five times at night. And uh, daytime, I didn't get there soon enough, I'd have to change pads again. So therefore, when I finally got to the urologist, he finally said, you know, let's try this. So I said, well, all right, I'll try anything. I haven't tried that before, but when I got here, the first comment I made to Catherine, and she had a very nice, sweet little smile on her voice, said, I have no confidence at all in what you can do for me, but I'm willing to try. I'd had a normal pregnancy. I'd lost a lot of my weight. I was feeling good. I went to the gym and thought I'm going to get back in there with the rest of them. Started exercising. I was on the treadmill, running, feeling like I was sweating a lot, and then I realized I was sweating between my legs, and suddenly, ugh, that wasn't what it was. Kim, like many women, started leaking after childbirth. An avid runner, her doctor recommended surgery, but then a urologist told her to try physical therapy, a non-invasive treatment that she had never heard of like so many others. I've been in practice in uh, urology in Torrance for 30 years, um, and that's after six years of training. And uh, you know, we have a, an, an active practice. We see a lot of incontinent people, men and women. Incontinence can be caused by many things, including bladder cancer, uh, uh, diet, learned voiding behaviors. So my job is to figure out what is the nature of the problem, define it, and what is the cause. Uh, if a woman comes in after having three babies and says, after my last baby, it, I started to leak urine whenever I stood up, uh, we don't have to go too far to know that that woman's going to have stress incontinence and issues with her pelvic musculature. Uh, mild to moderate stress incontinence, which is, you know, when people with stress incontinence start wearing pads, 
and then diapers and then bigger diapers and then the diapers don't contain it all. We want to interfere with that cycle earlier because that's when you can do these non-invasive uh, physical therapy techniques and, and make them dry. But we need to, I need to make sure as the physician that there's not blood in the urine, that they don't have chronic infection, that they don't have stones that are causing irritation. Those things are relatively easy to find out. And when they're not, then we usually offer, uh, we have drugs that we can offer, we have physical therapy. Most people, we give them confidence by starting them on drugs and telling them if they go to physical therapy, they'll likely be able to come off the drug and have their life back. Urologist Dr. Frederick Wolk says most people will benefit from physical therapy programs like Kasai's, a program that teaches patients to contract and strengthen their pelvic floor muscles using daily exercises to control urine flow. Patients are hooked up to a biofeedback machine that monitors their progress. Many are leak-free within six to eight sessions, but it requires commitment. Physical therapy for incontinence was um, quick. It was relatively easy. I'm not saying that it's a piece of cake and you don't have to do some work, but it's non-invasive, it's natural, and it's something that will, will stay with me for the rest of my life. It's, it's an exercise routine that I learned to better my health, and it wasn't cutting me open and stitching me up. It was giving me, taking what I have now and just making it better. This is about strengthening one, you said the pelvic floor muscle by using Kegels. The, the name Kegel exercise is derived from Dr. Arnold Kegel, who was an OBGYN at USC in the 1940s. And he became aware of the pelvic floor muscle and its contractibility. And he's really credited to be our, uh, the forefather, if you will, in our field. And he discovered uh, lo and behold, that exercising this muscle, this pelvic floor muscle, cures incontinence. One, she had to re-strengthen the bladder wall, the pelvic uh, walls, and the uh, sphincter muscle, and that involved a series of exercises, uh, Pilates exercises, involving the pelvic brace and strengthening those muscles. So we went through the program and uh, each time I noticed that the urine flow was improving, uh, it got a lot better, and uh, you know, I kept up with the program as much as I could keep up with it, and the exercises worked wonders. Even though it's unknown specialty within physical therapy, this is not alternate health. This is mainstream medicine, endorsed by all the most prestigious medical journals. Um, doctors uh, believe that it should be the first thing tried um, in treatment for urinary incontinence and because of its effectiveness it's covered by Medicare, it's covered by all private insurances, um, especially since it is so effective. The book I wrote, The Bathroom Key, Put an End to Incontinence, um, has been a five-year project. Um, it's a collaboration between me and one of my cured patients. Um, pretty much not a day goes by when one of my patients, up until the book, says to me, Catherine, if I had known this was curable in such few visits, I wouldn't have waited 10 years, 15 years um, suffering with this, hiding it, wearing an untold number of pads. I would have been in your program a lot sooner. You should write a book. Kasai co-authored the book, The Bathroom Key, with patient Kim Pernelli, who shares her struggles to take control of her bladder. And there is a very significant issue called key in the door syndrome that I definitely fell prey to where I was out running errands, everything was fine, and I'd pull into my driveway, get out, put my key in the door, and suddenly this urge would hit me that I was like practically knocking over my toddler to get to the bathroom in time. So, you know, it's times like that that are just so humiliating too because you're thinking, I don't have control over my own body any longer. Before I came to physical therapy, I thought, physical therapists work on athletes, on orthopedic, they're not here to help this sort of the part, part of the body but God bless them, they do. And it was a really wonderful experience, and because of that, um, I've been leak-free for nearly 10 years. Any books written on incontinence that are written for health professionals, how a nurse can care for a patient who has incontinence. Really, this is the first, do you see how it kind of looks like a novel? <laughs> I mean, that was our goal, to make it so reader-friendly that a person who's reluctant to um, cure, you know, or help herself. We'll, we'll take this as a first step and every chapter leads with a little novel-esque 
story about one of my patients who uh, suffered with this issue and relays some of the um, strategies and then the success story of how physical therapy cured their incontinence or and other pelvic floor issues. If people read the bathroom key, they'd realize that one, they don't have to go through a big surgery, likely. They need to be evaluated. They need to make sure that there aren't, isn't something bad going on, and there, and there frequently isn't. Mostly there isn't. This is a really common problem. Um, the reason the book can change people's lives is because they get so used to their lifestyle and their urinary problems, they don't realize it's a problem until it's very, very late. And the book has in it techniques that allow people to recognize what the problem is and that there are things you can do. People are always afraid of surgery, but most incontinence can be treated simply, non-surgically, sometimes with medicines and sometimes there's no need for medicines if you can do the exercises that are described in the book, biofeedback, pelvic muscle floor therapy, relaxation techniques. It's very effective stuff. So most people whose lives are run by the clock of their bladder don't have to live that way. I would say the last one or two years while our book was in production, out of the woodwork, celebrities have come forward to shed light on this issue. Um, um, Whoopi Goldberg, um, has, she was kind of the first. She talks about how she spritz and uh, how she has urinary incontinence with activity. Uh, Kirstie Alley, um, Kris Kardashian-Jenner on her reality show. There's been many segments where she has, you know, in the moment, uh, talked about, you know, having urinary leakage. So they've shed light, although, you know, the unfortunate thing is that you know, that's their endorsement has been for the pad companies. And um, certainly, I don't mind that because th at least we're talking about it. I relayed my story to Catherine here and she assured me, you're going to be fine, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, you're going to be fine. We'll make you a lot better, maybe 100%. So I said, well, I want to be at least uh, well enough that I can hunt this September 15th. And, and, oh, don't worry about it, you'll be okay, you'll be okay. And uh, so we started the procedure and uh, went fine. And I did go hunting and had very little leakage, even though we were doing some hard hiking, I think. 30 years ago, you wouldn't find a young uh, uh, executive who would even admit that she thought she had a problem with her bladder or that she wet her pants or that she was waking up at night. It was a silent thing. Uh, uh, the term overactive bladder was really invented by drug companies who invented drugs to treat this problem that we didn't know was a problem. And once we said, well, we have this drug and there were a couple of ads on television, people came out of the woodwork. I do that. I do that. I do that. I'm sure everybody knows somebody. When they go to the mall, they know where every bathroom is. They're stopping every 15 minutes. They can't go to the movies without stopping to go to the bathroom three times during the movie. When those people realize that they don't have to live that way, they, they, they flood the doors. Right. There are a lot of them. And it's the 21st century lifestyle, coffee, alcohol, not drinking enough water, all the spicy foods and things, and all, all of those things make bladder irritability worse. I even thought that there was something out there to strengthen the muscles and to give me the ability to be free of worry and wonder about having to urinate. I would have gone a lot sooner. A lot of people are under the impression that you can be too old to rehabilitate the muscle. And to be honest, she was one of them. As vibrant as she comes across, she was, she was so skeptical, she bordered on rudeness to me. And uh, she used it herself. Look, I've been through two surgeries. I've tried medications that haven't helped me. Why would something so non-invasive as physical therapy help me? And uh, boy, what a complete turnaround in her. So I would encourage viewers to, to realize that you're never too old to strengthen the muscle and to retrain your bladder to overcome incontinence. It's done wonders for me. I was only here two to three weeks. Two weeks when I stopped wearing the dip pads in the daytime and about three when I decided to take a chance at night too. And I very, I just don't have any problem with it anymore. If you take all the women that have breast cancer and all the women that have skin cancer, combine them, multiply that number by 20, that's the magnitude of urinary incontinence. And I mean, let's face it, it's embarrassing. People don't want to talk about it, and, but people shouldn't feel ashamed. The real shame is in having it. The real shame is that the average woman waits eight years to speak up, even to her own physician. 
when help is available, not invasively without surgery or medications or needles. Shortly after I finished physical therapy, I ran my first turkey trot out there in public, leak free. And yeah, it was great. And I, I run all the time. And like I said earlier, it's such a mental thing for me. It's where I go solve my, <laughs> the light, my world's problems. Um, so I really am glad to have, have running back in my life. It was, it was surely missed. As far as I'm concerned, it's a good program. I wish I would have known about it sooner. I definitely changed their lives, day and night. I mean, they come in tied to their bladders. Just everything has been taken out of their lives. Or, or put it this way, they don't do anything without thinking about their bladder. And when they leave, they arrive home, and they're able to look at their mail before they race to the bathroom. Or when they do errands, they're able to go from home to the library, to the supermarket, to the post office, without coming back between each errand. So that gives them a freedom they've forgotten. Now you can always go on to Praxis website for more helpful information. It is praxisphysicaltherapy.com. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching this edition of Around the Peninsula. See you next time.